On this week's Xamarin Show, I have my good friend Sam, back from Progress Telerik, showing us how we can make absolutely gorgeous user interface with Telerik UI for Xamarin, so tune in. Welcome back everyone to the Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno, Program Manager for Mobile Developer Tools here at Microsoft. I have my good friend Sam, all the way back from Progress Telerik. How's it going, Sam? Good, good. Thanks for having me back. Where did you fly? Because you didn't fly from Progress Telerik. <laughs> you flew from somewhere. I, I live in Pennsylvania. Ah. Beautiful Pennsylvania. But this is actually my fifth or sixth trip to Seattle this year. Nice, yeah. I love it here. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It is not raining at all here, <laughs> rest assured. <laughs> Um, I'm very excited for my bike ride home later. It's going to be wet and not <laughs> great. So it's okay, but I'm excited because you're going to talk about much prettier things. Yes. Not, not weather, not rain, not right. gray, but you're going to talk about pretty user interfaces, beautiful user interfaces, something yeah, to say. Yeah. Let's jump in. Yeah. Right, so once right. again, my name is Sam Basu. I'm a developer advocate at Progress. You guys uh, most likely know us as the maker of Telerik.NET controls for mm -hmm. all your web desktop and mobile apps, or Kinda UI for all of your web stuff. And we also make frameworks and other things. We are in the business of making developers productive, yeah. so you can ship your apps faster. Uh, but let's talk about Xamarin, because that's where uh, we live and breathe these days. I'm a big fan of Xamarin, as, as you are, uh, because I think for .NET developers to take our skills uh, cross-platform, I think the ship has sailed. I mean, it's, it's Xamarin. There is nothing else that's even close in terms of democratizing uh, building cross-platform mobile mm -hmm. apps with .NET, with the things that you know, uh, staying in Visual Studio all day. Yeah. And you're coming into a rich ecosystem where the platform has come a long way. The tools have gotten very mature over the last uh, couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, the ecosystem is rich. Uh, you have complete native API access on every platform that you're building it for. We were doing it with plugins. Thanks for mm -hmm. Xamarin Essentials. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, turning out to be very uh, useful. Good. Uh, so again, you have all the uh, ammunition to go build cross-platform apps. Yeah, I always said, right, native UI, native APIs, native performance. That's exactly. what we get, and that's what you get. Everything in C Sharp and .NET, which you love. Yeah. The only little gap is it's not Microsoft's job to give you everything under the sun, mm -hmm. uh, not out of the box. Because, we try. We yeah, try. Well, you try, and that's where the community and the, and the ecosystem kind of steps in. Uh, so that's where we come in as well. So app, uh, developers get to make quality enterprise or indie apps with the things that they need and be able to light them up with smart UI. Mm. So let's talk about polished UI. And we are yeah. talking about native UI for Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, and Xamarin Forms. Yeah. And it's all part of our uh, Xamarin suite. But again, we build UIs for everything, mm -hmm. uh, web, desktop, everything, WPF, WinForms, uh, ASP.NET, Xamarin and all of the web stack and yeah. all productivity, reporting tools, everything. And it's important because, you know, a lot of, I just had someone ask me, uh, recently at .NET Comp, they go, oh, you know, why, why Xamarin over something like a progressive web app or, or something like that? I was like, well, we're all about native, right? You have a full native API right. access, full everything. And I go, when you think about it, you can also share code, often not just between your mobile apps, but between your back end, mm -hmm. between your desktop apps, yep. and even some of your user interface. It's the knowledge, right? I think you right. talked about that. I mean, it's, it's that I know this stuff, so I can use one programming language, one set of tools, and one set of things like Progress Telerik yep. to actually build across everything. Yeah, yeah. nice. We, we take care of uh, making sure the APIs are consistent, so you can start reusing some of the UI between like WPF or Xamarin mm -hmm. if, if you need to. Uh, so let's talk about what we can do in the UI for, uh, in, in the Xamarin space. We have a full suite called UI for Xamarin, mm. and it's something we have put in a lot of um, effort and energy behind it in the last two or three years because we see the mic uh, Microsoft and the Xamarin adoption kind of go through the roof. So uh, we are putting in the love. Um, so uh, dozens of controls across Xamarin, iOS, and Android. These are oh. purely native controls, because that's what we are good at building, mm -hmm. native controls for iOS and Android. But we also give you wrappers, so you can render them from Xamarin Forms. Oh, OK. Some so of I, it, no matter how you're building, basically. Exactly. Uh, some of it, we will actually use uh, Skia Sharp as a mm. drawing canvas to render some of the smart UI. Uh, and you can be careful as to how you bundle your applications together. Mm -hmm. But again, we don't want to hold you back. Uh, use it however you want from Windows or Mac. It works consistently from any Visual Studio. And we give you multiple ways in which you can bring it in, how you can get started with uh, templates and so on. Oh, cool. Lots of customization options. And again, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, we try making the best UI, document <laughs> UI for all developers. Uh, but we also have sample apps, so you can play around with this thing. Uh, there are other options, but make sure um, what you choose is really something you're comfortable with so, and it works for you. So go to the App Store, Google iOS, and type Telerik UI, exactly. download the sample, see everything in yeah, action. So exactly. everything you're showing, be able to actually get your hands on. Right now, like, as you're watching it, you could be downloading it and trying exactly. out Telerik UI. Just search UI. for Telerik UI for 
uh, Xamarin and we'll give you a nice example app. Mm. It has all of the UI and it also has some of the code oh, that cool. we use to render that UI so you can like see that. how that's working. Beautiful. So um, some of the things that mm. we uh, can throw in in our suite are things that are really hard to create by hand and I've tried. Uh, you, <laughs> you don't want to get this uh, down to the metal with native because these things are difficult. Charts and graphs. We got like dozens of charts and graphs, uh, everything which is very touch friendly and interactive. Uh, different types of list views and grids. Uh, these are these sound simple, but when you get into the UI virtualization, the different types mm -hmm. of layouts for iPads or uh, mobile devices, those are hard. Calendars are incredibly hard. Side drawers, um, and then when you talk about grids, making sure you can do like full CRUD operations, making mm -hmm. sure you can hook it up to any data service on Azure or Amazon, whatever, and bring the data in and be able to do it seamlessly on the client side. Uh, filtering, sorting, uh, all of those things. If you have uh, simple like forms operations where you mm -hmm. have some business object that you want to ren render, you want the user to be able to fill up a form or make some changes, yeah. bring that data back. We give you a data form which does easy binding and it oh, takes cool. care of it, uh, how you write back to your uh, backend services. And obviously different types of gauges, linear, yeah. radial, uh, so you All can light things. up your UI with the dashboard. Uh, don't ever keep the user waiting <laughs> if you yeah. can, so we give you nice busy indicators. So a lot of these different things are kind of built into the box. That's cool, yeah, because I get a lot of questions all the time. It's like, well, oh, but I need to go create this control or it's not in Xamarin Forms. And I'm like, I go, yeah, you know, we try to give you a lot of the basic building blocks as much as we can abstract. But even if you weren't using Xamarin Forms or just using iOS or Android or even not Xamarin, like, you still have to make those things anyways. Exactly. Or luckily, Telerik yeah. UI comes yeah. along and you did everything for us. Yeah. Don't don't reinvent the <laughs> wheel because I mean it takes us a lot of engineering effort yeah. to fine tune every one of these applications, make them uh, pixel perfect the UI, yeah. and make sure things are performant because yeah. you don't want things to be kind of slowing you down because you threw in a, a complex UI on top of it. Makes sense, yeah. So that's where uh, we are at. Uh, we keep putting in a lot of effort. So let's take a look. Yeah. Right. How we get and get started. So first thing is I'm going to get out here. Uh, this is our homepage, uh, telerik.com forward slash xamarin ui cool. Start here. It's going to tell you ev everything about how we do it. It's uh, UI controls at the heart of it, so you can render them however you want. Mm. You can do simple code behind with XAML, or you can do full on MVVM. Bring in any framework that you want. We'll give you commanding support. Uh, some of the binding, data bindings are built into Xamarin Forms, but if you want to bring in an MVVM framework, we help you out. And we can kind of walk you through all the things that we can do. Uh, mm. You can see how many controls we have for Xamarin Forms and also for Xamarin iOS and Android. Oh, very cool, yeah. That's nice because I, I feel like since you've already done a lot of things in the WPF and UWP space, like you already know kind of like how the developers build with XAML, yeah. use you know, Prism and all that other stuff. So you kind of understand the developer exactly. that, yeah. that's yeah. building uh, apps with XAML. Yeah, we've been doing this for 15, 16 years <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. OK, so start here, OK? Uh, and then uh, there are different ways in which you can bring this in. So if you already have a Telerik account, just go in here into your account, and you can download uh, the MSI packages or mm -hmm. just the EXE packages. You can uh, unzip, and you can have the whole thing. You can just download a free trial, mm -hmm. uh, and then we give you all of the binaries. We give you some sample applications that you can play around with. Oh, cool. um, so different ways to get it in. Uh, and then you can always reference the binaries by hand uh, mm -hmm. in your project. Or if you're starting off a Greenfield application, we can help you out with some templates. Oh, cool. Okay? You so guys have NuGet support too? For yes, NuGet absolutely. I love that. So let's go into Visual Studio. This is VS4 Mac, works mm -hmm. exactly the same way on VS4 uh, for Windows. Let's open up this uh, little project here. Uh, we call this QSF. Uh, and this is the project uh, that we give you when you download mm. uh, the bits. Okay. This is a sample project, has all of our UI. This is what's powering the uh, sample app that you can download in, from the stores. Oh, nice. So it's a full on app. It's not a fake Hello World thing. Yeah. Uh, this has all of the UI, has it for iOS, Android, and UWP. But everything is done here in a .NET standard project. Oh, uh, nice. So it's, it's all. Uh, one UI across all platforms. And it's always Xamarin Forms yep. in the sample. This is all Xamarin cool. Forms. Beautiful. Now, uh, there are different ways in which you can bring this in. Like I said, so you, if you have the DLLs, you can just reference them by hand or make, make things a little easier for yourself. Uh, if you're on Visual Studio, we can give you a nice little template here to learn for Xamarin. Uh, it also shows up when you do uh, File, uh, New Solution. And you scroll down all of the options. And then somewhere here, .NET, you see that Telerik mm -hmm. Forms app. Oh. You don't have to do this, but if you're starting off brand new. Or you just want to try to t test it out, right? Yeah. A little trial run. Yeah, yeah. So we can throw in all of the DLLs and all the references, make sure you're all set, and then you Beautiful. can start building your stuff. Very so cool. that's, that's one way. But if you already have an existing project, we obviously want to bring you uh, in with the NuGet package, so mm -hmm. it's easy for you. So again, right click and do uh, Add Packages. Mm -hmm. The one thing I already have here is installed is a Telerik NuGet feed. Yep. 
which uh, I'm going to bail out of here just for a second and going to show you how this is done. Let's go to preferences yeah. and we're going to go down to the NuGet feed. See the sources here? Yeah. This is the regular NuGet source. Uh, you add the Telerik NuGet uh, feed to it. It's going to ask for your credentials one time and then you're good to go. Oh, cool. So you got to log in with your Telerik. Just account. one time. Yeah. Very beautiful. And then we don't uh, keep asking over and over again, obviously. Now, when I uh, go in here to add a package, um, I can search for, uh, in fact, all of our uh, bits also live on that NuGet server, not just oh, Xamarin. So anything in there. Anything oh, in that's there. Nice. But if you search for Xamarin, you're going to see this guy here, Telerik UF for Xamarin. Mm. If you just get this, you get everything under the sun, wow. right? And you can go back versions if you want, uh, but this is the entire suite with all of the UI. Ah, okay. Now, we have been a little careful in the last uh, couple of years to kind of break this down because you see that even with UF or Xamarin, we have like a dozen plus different NuGet packages. Oh, wow. And the reason is we want to be conscious of the fact that these are mobile apps and yeah. we want to be careful of your app package size. Mm. So if out of uh, two dozen uh, controls, you're just using two, don't get the whole thing. Yeah. You're just going to bloat up your uh, app package, just get the ones that are for your control. So we have it nicely broken up. Uh, so we have some namespaces, like for example, data inputs. Mm. Those drive like six or seven different controls. Mm. So if you're just using those, just get that, Got nothing it. else. And then uh, some of our controls are purely native with yeah. iOS and Android. Some of them we render through Skia Sharp. Oh, okay. And we can be careful to, if you're just using those controls, we just give you the parts of Skia Shop that oh, you need. That's nice. So you can kind of pick and choose. If you're really conscientious about your app size, pick right. and choose which ones that are there. And that's nice because sometimes you might be using everything. So just yep. make it easy, yep. right? Else. So get that and yeah. then you'll have everything. Cool. So let me close that. And then one other thing I want to show you is um, back in uh, our docs. So our docs live here, docs.terry.com. Mm -hmm. uh, any app uh, platform you kind of build it or break it based on docs. Mm -hmm, yeah. if, if you don't have good docs, you might as well not make it. because yeah. It's not documented, it doesn't exist. Exactly. Developers are going to struggle and that's not a good experience. Mm. Now, the one thing we actually just did, we uh, our R3 release for 2018 just went out, mm. so hot bits, uh, but we, we were able to light up a few more things. If you are using the templates, the VSIX, the extensions in Visual Studio, we can mm. light up a few more things for you. Uh, some things that are very common across most mobile apps are logging screens, mm -hmm. authentication screens, like search through a list of things, we give you templates. Oh, cool. So these are all Xamarin Forms templates, but it, it's already hooked up with our UI. Nice. So for example, you can just go into UI for Xamarin and add these specific oh, screens beautiful. if you want. So for example, if you want to have a stock screen, we'll throw in the charts and graphs. Wow. So you can already have these things hooked up and then you just point it to the stocks that you want. Activity, if you are building anything like Fitbit or, uh, or uh, iOS, uh, things mm. that which have activity, you can throw in these gauges. We'll give you some of these things and then you can customize. Uh, search, these are very common across most yeah. Planner Business apps. You want to have a list of things you want to search on. Uh, this one gives you an autocomplete. So as you are type typing, you can get a, a suggestion on what uh, what the matches are. So Lovely. we kind of light up these things just so people can get a have uh, people have a nicer getting started experience. That's great. I love it. So that. these are some templates that are out there. And for everything else, like look through the docs uh, for Windows or Mac, it's exactly the same. Mm. And for every one of the controls that we have, you'll notice that we give you um, uh, not just the doc documentation on how to work it code behind, but MVVM as well. Oh, very so well. just dive into whichever input or chart or whatever view control you're using and look through the docs. We, we try to help you out. Cool. Okay, so let's go back and look at this app real quick. I'm going to run this, just the iOS version of it. Yeah, I like that everything's broken down there. So I was like, oh, I need this one control. Let me go learn about it. What NuGet yeah. package do I need? How would I use it? What are all the properties? Because sometimes just when you get something, the new NuGet package, like, oh, there's so much to do, yeah. right? Yeah. So much to do, explore. Yeah. So it's very cool. So again, this is the app that's out there for iOS and Android. Uh, go ahead and play around with it. So you can see the different types of charts and graphs we can do, how things are interactive. Um, I can go back and show you maybe uh, some of the most popular ones. Uh, we did uh, some bordering. We did some new checkboxes. I want to uh, see the checkboxes. I've been wanting checkboxes <laughs> out of the box. All right. Are you ready? Everyone needs a checkbox. Uh, barcodes, which is very popular. Uh, tree V controls. Let's uh, go back to the checkbox. You said. Sam thought I was kidding. I'm, I'm dead serious. <laughs> so <laughs> simple mm. checkboxes that are uh, easy to kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And th these are all like two-way data binding. So cool. you have an object. You can turn things on and off with a binary. Uh, the things that are a little more complicated are things like uh, grids, right? Mm. And grids make it hard to render things uh, and make it sure it's cross-platform. 
uh, oh, by the way, this is the data form that I was talking about. Oh, so yeah, if you cool. have uh, a business object, you just render it. We can, based on your uh, objects uh, types, we can infer the kind of UI that you need. Mm. Radio buttons, check boxes, tree views, uh, text boxes, we can render all of that Beautiful. without you having to write up the whole UI wow, and you nice. get two-way data binding. That's great. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but again, play around with this. It's it's all out there. Uh, some of the things that we like is like these are busy indicators <laughs> that you can throw in whatever you like in front of it. So can you look at the buttons? Sure. I like Again, to see. I like to explore stuff, right? Yeah. Look at those little those little chips. I call them exactly. Right? Oh, you cool. have buttons. You in Xamarin Forms, right? Mm -hmm. So why why are we building rebuilding buttons? Because we can give you more customization mm -hmm. around the APIs, around the borders. Uh, again, making things pixel perfect, making uh, giving them like a uh, background image, things That's like cool. that, which are a little hard to do with the default button. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all about developer productivity and making sure. Uh, you have all of the APIs that you need to light up your UI quickly and be able to um, build up your app and make it uh, nice and. I like this too because I can see like here's new stuff, here's an updated calendar. Yep. Calendars are hard. I mean, the don't I mean, are the very charts hard. are hard. Right, all this stuff is not. It's like it's all doable, right? But exactly. like, do you really want to spend all your time when? I think people we've we've invented the the, the calendar. Right? Right. It looks like a calendar. <laughs> so let's get a right. calendar, especially when you want to. Not only you want to like kind of get up and running fast, but you also want it to look pretty, right? right. You want it to actually look legitimate, like a, a real application. Okay, so that's, uh, and we uh, we also did chatbots. Yeah, we uh, So chatbot mm -hmm. UI is kind of built into uh, Xamarin Forms. Uh, oh, this is the grid. Good. Grids are really hard to do, actually, it turns out. Uh, <laughs> so we can uh, do theming with the grids, we can do filtering, sorting, uh, mm -hmm. and any of these things that we are throwing in, it's all, um, customizable and they can be localized. Oh, so nice. we give you resource files to start off with mm. and then you can add your own um, your language settings. And oh, very cool. uh, as, as, as such, I would like to say like accessibility and um, uh, when you put love and care in your apps, it shows mm -hmm. and you're, you drive up user engagement. So localize things if you can. We are um, on board with all of the Xamarin Forms 3.1 uh, support. Oh, cool. So we are on latest the cutting edge to make sure like if you want to do style your XAML with CSS, go at it. Oh, cool. Right, so all of that is in 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 um, in place to kind of have you uh, go do these things. You can hook them up to whatever data sources you need. So back on the docs, that's one more thing we did actually. Uh, so let's go here, cloud integration. Because again, mobile apps don't live in a silo, right? Mm -hmm. So we did a whole bunch of stuff here. If you want to use uh, SQL database in Azure. We have documentation on exactly how you hook this up. If you want to use oh. Cosmos DB, we show you how to use Cosmos DB with our grids and oh, with our um, our UI in front of it. How you. to get it all inside exactly. of it. Exactly. Cool. And I mean, if you want to do, go use Amazon, go use Amazon. So yeah. it's it's all cloud services, it's all RESTful, so it doesn't matter. We'll give you the UI to light things up. Very cool. Okay. Nice. Now, uh, another thing that we sometimes get dinged on is um, as developer advocates, we sometimes write two simple apps. Mm. So mm -hmm. last year, we actually spent a little bit of time uh, to write a full featured app oh, that cool. actually does something real, put it in the App Store. It's full on MVVM pattern written with the our UI, mm -hmm. and it's using Azure Cognitive Services. Oh. So do a search on Telerik Tagit. Tag it. And it'll take you to this example. And it's a landing page. You can download the apps, and the entire source code is out on GitHub. Mm. So you can see exactly how we built this app. So the video, do you, or do you have the app? I actually have the app. Oh my goodness! So let's. I remember when this was released. It, it's always fun. I think that was one of the, while well, you're getting it up, one of the most um, enjoyable parts that I got um, when I was at, at Xamarin early on was for Xamarin Evolve for 2014 and 2016. And I worked with Pierce, uh, Pierce Bogan, and we got to build the app each year. Mm -hmm. so we got to try new yeah, backends, we got to try new uh, logins, but we got to try Xamarin Forms, the latest and greatest. And one of my favorite projects ever was the 2016 yeah. app. I thought it was. Which was very well done. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I would say I, uh, I built that. And Antonio, who is an amazing designer, helped with the UI design. But it, it was great because I'm trying out the latest and greatest controls yeah. and really putting a lot of energy yeah. to make it look yeah. good. And, so. and to your point, like developers find it hard to do design well. Yeah, and I we, did, yeah. We don't always have access to a designer, but yeah. what we want to do is with theming support mm. and with all of these UIs, uh, we make it consistent across your whole app. And with some little tweaks, you can have a polished UI yeah. that looks professionally done. Cool. So uh, this one's a little uh, tagit application. You can again download this from iOS, Android, or UWB stores. Mm -hmm. What it does is all of us take lots of images yeah. uh, and photographs with our phones, and they get hard to search on. So mm -hmm. this one essentially just tries to tag things oh, cool. and go from there. So uh, once you download this, you can give it access to your photo uh, album. Uh, this one has a few sample images. So I'm going to select one, and then when I hit Next, hopefully my Wi-Fi is working. See that little, little bubble thing? We actually oh. went off and called Azure. 
Oh, cool. Azure Cognitive Services, the Vision API, mm -hmm. to say, what is this image? Yeah. Right? And all of this AI, uh, it's kind of uh, built into Azure Cognitive Services. We are just calling it a RESTful endpoint. Oh, cool. And again, I mean, everybody is building mobile apps, right? Yeah. So how do you stand out mm -hmm. um, between, uh, with your users? How do you drive up engagement? I think you give them a delightful user experience with the right UI, mm -hmm. and you start making your apps intelligent and more personal. That's, yeah, that's totally. how you stand out. Yeah. So this one's Azure saying, hey, it's a large waterfall. I can uh, favor this, yeah. so you get rating controls. I can save this. I can uh, do that. And then this one's, again, the little side drawer that comes up. Ah, I can cool. go look at the timeline of when I did what. Oh, wow, nice. Then I can go back and look at my favorites. So this is how you can kind of start tagging your pictures in your phone and then be able to search on these things. Like, show me pictures of waterfalls that I've taken. Oh, nice. And it's going to come back and, uh, and look these things up. So this one's a full-featured app written purely in Xamarin Forms. Beautiful. No iOS, Android-specific code at all. It's all Xamarin Forms with our UI in front of it. Ah, cool. And Azure Cognitive Services uh, powering it. So if you want to take a look at how this is hooked up, I'll just show you one line of code of how easy this is. Uh, this is Computer Vision API, and what I have here is my constants. This kind of defines my uh, Azure region, mm -hmm. and this is my subscription key. So with that, I can come down here, and I can call into uh, Azure Cognitive Services. So here is my uh, task, and I'm, this is my URL to my image, or I can just give, give it a byte string mm -hmm. of your uh, exact image. And then I new up a new HTTP client, give it my key, give it a few things like Azure uh, for it to say, I want the color, the categories, the description, all of that. Mm -hmm. And we make a post request. Once it comes back, we're going to uh, see what Azure got us back, and we're going to capture the ID, the details, mm -hmm. the captions, and so on. Nice. So that's how, it, how easy it is. And we wanted to have a full-featured app that people can play around with, yeah. uh, the source code, so you can see how we can make a full-on full, full -on app that is uh, following some patterns and Beautiful. uses the UI in front of it. I love it. Yeah. So again, the whole point of all of this is to make developers productive. Yep. UI that you don't want to create by hand. Uh, take a look at uh, our releases. We do three major releases a year, oh, nice. plus service packs in between. Oh, cool. And we are keeping very busy. In the last two or three years, we have really just made a lot of investments, and it shows in the Xamarin Forms uh, uh, controls in particular, and also in Xamarin iOS and Android. So don't reinvent the wheel if you're a Xamarin <laughs> developer. She perhaps yeah. faster, because there's some help. Beautiful, Sam. Well, this has been absolutely great. I love seeing the latest and greatest, and I love the, the Tag It app. I'm going to go download it and poke around the source code. Sure. We'll put links to everything down there in the show notes below, so make sure you check it out. Um, Sam, thanks again for coming on, showing off all the pretty things that I can go now implement and put into my apps. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This has been The Xamarin Show. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube or Channel 9 so you get the latest and greatest in your inbox each and every week. And of course, if you're on YouTube, ding that bell and become part of the notification squad so you get notified every time there's a new episode from anything here at Channel 9. So until next time, I'm James Montemagno. This has been The Xamarin Show, and thanks for watching.